Part 3. Coping with Demand Fluctuations There are three strategies or approaches that help us deal with demand fluctuations. If you are in a seasonal business and we sell ice cream, what should we do with our capacity in summer when demand is high? Do we hire additional staff? Do we rent or buy additional equipment? What are we going to do in winter when demand for ice cream consumption drops? So these three strategies or approaches help to guide us through these dilemmas. Let's look into them one by one. The first approach or strategy is level capacity plan. It tells us to ignore the demand fluctuations and keep nominal capacity level constraint with same number of stuff throughout the year and same processes and same equipment. In the graph, on horizontal axis is time and on vertical axis is volume. So demand is in the blue ink and it fluctuates, as you see, throughout the year, while capacity, which is in green, remains constant. Thus, it is a line. In our example of ice cream business, it would mean to ignore the high demand in summer and low demand in winter and continue producing as much as your capacity allows throughout the year. However, there may be slight concern because the level capacity plan is suggested for non-perishable goods and given the fact that ice cream is a perishable good and can normally be stored up to 2-3 months under right conditions, this approach is not recommended for this type of business. To sum up, there are two conditions to follow the strategy product must be suitable for storage and non-perishable with reasonable shelf line. And second, demand must be relatively reliable to avoid the risk of large stockouts or excessive stock levels. Who follows this strategy of the level capacity plan? Mostly companies within mass production, such as steel production, household appliances, canned goods, Let's take cigarettes as an example. Not the best example, as smoking is harmful, but just for the sake of an argument, do you know when the demand for cigarettes is high? Make a guess. To start with, let me tell you that the demand for cigarettes is fairly consistent throughout the year. However, sales do drop off in January and February because smokers make New Year resolutions to give up their habit, but demand returns to fairly consistent levels because some fail to quit. And then demand peaks around Christmas time for the party season and has a reasonable shelf life. As demand is fairly consistent, the operation can feel confident about following such a strategy. Again, smoking is bad for your health. Canned foods is another example because expiration dates in general range from one to four years or three up to six years if stored under appropriate condition. Canned tuna can last about three to five years and there is a high demand for canned fish closer to a new year because of all the salads we tend to eat during holiday season, Russian and Central Asian countries mostly. Shuba and mimosa, you know what I'm talking about. The second approach or strategy is chase demand, which tells us to adjust your company's capacity to reflect fluctuations in demand. You can see in the graph now the demand is in blue and it fluctuates throughout the year and company adjusts its capacity, the green line, to meet demand fluctuations. I drew the capacity first, I'm sorry, my mistake. But usually your capacity will be adjusted to demand fluctuations. So back to ice cream business example, you will hire temporary staff 
during peak summer periods. For example, to make most of the profit during summer or peak period. And subsequently, when demand falls, you will lay off your temporary staff. That's the rule of the chase demand. Chase demand strategy is opposite to the level capacity plan. And it is much more difficult to achieve because you may require different number of staff, different working hours, and even different amounts of equipment in each period. And usually it is appropriate for perishable goods. An example of chase demand strategy could be all kind of work with seasonal cycle, such as restaurant in a seaside resort. During the winter, there are few customers and therefore there are few waiters. While in summer, the restaurant will be full of clients and during the summer period, temporary staff will be taken to speed up the services. Let me point out that the first two strategies, the level capacity plan and chase demand strategies are both supply related solutions. Our alternative and third strategy that we will discuss in this session is demand management. Demand management tells us to change or influence the demand to fit available capacity. So in the graph in green, there is our capacity. Then we see in pencil the original demand that fluctuates. And our aim is to change that demand. So if our attempt is successful, we get a new demand curve, which is in blue ink changed demand. How to do that? How to change demand? Well, there are four ways to do that. First is to constrain customer access. For example, schedule appointments to manage the demand. Second is price differentials. The most obvious mechanism is to change demand through price. Example, Price for flowers skyrocket during International Women's Day on March 8th because there is high demand for flowers. Third is scheduling promotion. In the United States, Turkey is popular during Thanksgiving period. However, throughout the year, the demand is very low. So offering promotions during low demand is a way to influence demand for Turkey. Another example, gym offer incentives or cheaper rates on off-peak period. So if you go to the gym before 4 or 5 p.m. on weekdays, you're likely to get incentives and a discounted price. Fourth is service differentials. Allow service levels to reflect demand. What does it mean? When there is high demand, service may deteriorate staff will no longer be nice or for example there may be delays in delivery because of a lot of orders in the peak season you might have witnessed it in your life journey i'm sure you can come up with your own examples and fifth is to provide alternative products or services for example universities during summer when the demand is low can offer their facilities for various events, conferences, fairs, and trainings, which utilizes the capacity during off-peak period. All in all, just to give a common story to this session, let's go back to our ice cream business. In case of demand management strategy for an ice cream business, your concern would be on how to increase the demand for ice cream during off-peak winter season, where you could try to manage or influence the demand for ice cream by offering ice cream to restaurants and hotels in off-peak season, for example, or scheduling promotion, like buy one, get second one free. Or, of course, you could try reducing the price for an ice cream, which I don't think you can reduce it by much, given the price of an ice cream, but you could try. In this session, we did an introduction to the capacity management. Now you know what is capacity, how to measure capacity using three measures and calculate utilization and efficiency, and how to cope with demand fluctuations using three strategies. Thank you for listening. Please give this video a thumbs up 
and do take care of yourself and your loved ones. This was Sitori Nayatova, module leader for the operations management module at Westminster International University in Tashkent. Thank you.